Matatag Curriculum, PE and Health Grade 4, Quarter 1, Lessons 3 to 6. Current Health Status and Body Awareness. Hello kids! How are you today? Are you ready to learn things today? If yes, then let's start! Our topic in PE and Health 4 is about hearing test, vision test, and scoliosis test. This is Teacher Aika, your online teacher. Learning competency Relate current health status to body awareness. Here are the objectives. First, discuss personal health issues and concerns. Second, measure the current health status of your own body. And third, realize the importance of valuing one's health. This time, let us talk about hearing tests. Hearing tests are how healthcare providers determine if you have hearing loss. You may have several hearing tests in your lifetime. Hearing tests are how people can find out if they have hearing loss. Different kinds of hearing tests use different techniques to identify hearing loss. One common test, usually audiometry and the audiogram, to identify hearing loss and show test results. Hearing tests don't require special preparation and don't hurt. What are the types of hearing tests? There are several types of hearing tests. Some tests are typically used to check adults' hearing and others are used for babies, children, and adults. Hearing test types include the following. First, pure tone testing. This common hearing test finds the quietest volume you can hear at each pitch. Children and adults have pure tone testing. Second is bone conduction testing. This test is used to see if you have wax or fluid blocking your outer ear or middle ear, or if hearing loss is present in the sensory cells of hearing. Third is speech testing. Adults and some children may have this kind of hearing test. Speech testing involves listening to and repeating certain words. The test shows how you understand the speech. The fourth one is auditory brainstem response or ABR. This test checks the connections or pathways between your inner ear and brain. Audiologists may use this test to check hearing in children and people who can complete pure tone test. They may also use this test for people who have a brain injury that affects their hearing. The fifth one is Autoacoustic Emissions Test or OAE. Audiologists use this test to check your inner ear function. The fifth one is Tympanometry. This test checks how well your eardrum moves. Audiologists may do tympanometry tests to see if you have a ruptured eardrum, if you have fluid in your middle ear or wax in your ear canal.
next we have the vision screening. A vision screening is a brief test that mainly checks how well you can see things up close and far away. It's also called an eye test. The test usually involves reading letters on an eye chart. A vision screening is a quick way to find out if you need a comprehensive or complete eye exam. A complete exam checks both your vision and eye health. It looks for signs of serious eye disorders that may not have symptoms such as glaucoma. Children provider will use special vision screening tests to look for signs of common eye conditions that need early treatment to prevent long-term loss of vision. These eye conditions include the following. First, we have amblyopia. Children with amblyopia have poor vision that usually happens in just one eye. It's caused by a problem with how the brain and eye work together. It's sometimes called lazy eye. Amblyopia is the most common cause of vision or vision loss in children. The second one is strabismus. This condition causes eye or each eye to look in a different direction. One or both eyes may turn in cross eyes or turn out wall eyes. If strabismus isn't corrected, it can cause amblyopia and permanent eye damage. Screening for problems with near and far vision is used to help find common vision problems that can be corrected with eyeglasses or contact lenses. In certain cases, eye surgery may also be an option and these, includes, these conditions include the following. First, we have nearsightedness or myopia. Nearsightedness or myopia is a condition that makes far away things look blurry. Farsightedness or hyperopia. Farsightedness or hyperopia is a condition that makes close-up things look blurry. Presbyopia. This is only in middle-aged adults and older. This condition makes it hard to see things up close. It's a normal part of aging that makes the lens of the eye less flexible. Presbyopia often begins around age 45. Let's have the scoliosis test. A scoliosis exam allows doctors to see whether the spine has a curve. People with scoliosis can have a single curve creating a C shape or a double curve creating an S shape. Scoliosis exams are physical examinations involving exercise that allow a doctor to see the shape of the spine. They are neither painful nor invasive and they require no preparation. Scoliosis sometimes appears as a child or teenager grows and develops. Detecting scoliosis at this stage allows a doctor to monitor the curve of the spine and recommend treatment if the curve is severe enough to warrant it.
A scoliosis exam is a type of physical examination that a doctor performs in their office. There are two types, screening tests which look for warning signs that a person may have scoliosis and diagnostic tests which confirm scoliosis and assess the severity of the curve in the spine. A person with a positive screening test may require diagnostic tests. Previously, scoliosis screenings were part of routine child health visits. Now, concerns about the overdiagnosis and overtreatment mean that many organizations do not recommend this approach. Those in favor of screening recommend that it take place twice in females age 10 to 12 years and once in males age 13 to 14 years old. So what do doctors look for during the exam? In scoliosis exams, a doctor will look for external signs that can indicate scoliosis. These signs include the following. First, one shoulder blade being higher or more prominent than the other. Second, one shoulder being visibly higher than the other from either the front or the back. Third, more space between the body and the arm on one side when standing with the arms hanging loosely. Fourth, skin creases on one side of the waist. Fifth, one hip that is higher than the other. Next, a head that does not appear centered within the pelvis. Test during a scoliosis exam. The main screening test for scoliosis is the ADAMS test, which doctors may also call a forward bend test. During this test, a person removes their shirt so that the spine is fully visible. Then, they bend forward with their knees straight and their feet together, allowing the arms to hang freely. This position can allow doctors to see First, a visible curve in the spine Second, asymmetries in the shoulders, shoulder blades, or waistline Third, a hump or elevation of the rib cage on one side. If there are signs of scoliosis, a doctor may place a scoliometer on the curved area. This device measures the angle of the curve. Neither the Adams test nor a scoliometer can provide an entirely accurate picture of what the spine looks like and the significance of the curve. If the physical exam indicates a scoliosis, a doctor will refer the person for medical imaging to confirm a diagnosis. And that wraps up today's lesson. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more content like this, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you never miss an update. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you!